we would like to represent the number 0 in floating point binary by 32 zeros, just as we see here. But we're not able to do that using the normalised form, which we've seen in the previous video. So let's see why that is. This is the normalised equation here. Now, if we were, were looking at the sine bit, the sine bit's just the same. 0 will give us a value of minus 1 to the power of 0, which will just give us the value 1. The mantissa, well, we would be adding 1 on to the mantissa. So the mantissa in the fixed point number system would be given by the 1 here and the fractional part, which would be point zero 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 and we would have all the rest of the zeros here. And this would be times two to the power of the exponent minus one two seven. So the exponent again is all zeros. So it would be zero minus one two seven. So it would be two to the minus one two seven. So we're just going to have the value one from here and we're going to have the two to the minus one two seven. So that's just going to be two to the minus one two seven and this is going to be the smallest number that we could represent. So this number would be approximately equal to 5.827 times 10 to the minus 39. Now it is a very small number, but it is not equal to zero. It's approximately equal to zero, but not equal. So what we do is we introduce something called the subnormal form. Now, whenever all of the exponent values are zero, so the exponent is just given by eight zeros. Then we introduce the subnormal form. Now the subnormal form is written like this. The sign remains the same. The mantissa is different because we don't have the plus one. We just leave that as the zero. And the bias changes. So the bias, instead of being the exponent minus one, two, seven, is going to be one minus the 127, which in effect would be 126. Now, I haven't written this out as just simply 126, because if we were doing, say, for example, 64-bit um, or 128-bit, then the new value here would be uh, a slightly different, because it would be 1 minus whatever that particular bias was for that number of bits. So we'll get into that in the uh, a later video when we look at the actual IEEE representation. But all we need to do now is just accept that this is the new equation that we use whenever the exponent is all zeros. So in the denormalized form, the zero here is understood in the same way that in the normalized form, the one here is understood. Also, in the denormalized form, we note that there aren't any 1s here in the exponent. So, in the normalized form, we would shift the decimal point up until we found the very first 1 in the exponent. But in this case, there is no 1 in the exponent to be found. So, what we can do is we can decide to take the decimal point and we can take the decimal point at the first point of the mantissa. So we could take the decimal point here. So if the decimal point was here, we would have the value times 2 to the minus 1, 2, 7. But we have already said that this is a denormalized form, so we know that the first bit is a 0. So we can actually move the point here up to this point here. So in doing so, this would then give us, instead of 2 to the minus 1, 2, 7, because we've moved the point further up here, it'll be 2 to the minus 1, 2, 6. And that's how you get the 1 minus 2, 7 here. 1 minus 2, 7 gives us the minus 1, 2, 6. So that's a description of sorts. It's not fully detailed, but it gives you a good indication of the subnormal form. Again, it's best seen by example, so let's work through a few examples and it'll all become a lot clearer. So let's look at the example of using all zeros. 
we know that the sine bit is going to be given by minus 1 to the power of 0. So there's nothing new there. And we're multiplying that by, in this case, it's going to be 0 plus what the mantissa is. In this case, the mantissa is all 0, so we could just represent it by a 0. And we're going to multiply this whole thing by 2 to the power of minus 1, 2, 6. Now, when we're doing this denormalized or subnormal form, the power here is always 1 minus the 1, 2, 7. So it's always fixed at minus 1, 2, 6. It never changes. Now, all we're going to do is multiply one thing with another and then multiply the whole thing with 0. So if you multiply anything by 0, you just get a value of 0. So that means that we can represent 0 with all of these 32 bits being 0. So that's a simple one. But the, the power of using this subnormal method will be shown on the next example. Now we're going to look at the smallest value that can be represented using our subnormal form. And it's going to be given by all zeros and a 1 in the last digit. So what we're going to have here again is minus 1 to the power of 0 for the sine bit. In this case, for the mantissa, we're going to have the value of 0 plus. Now it's going to be the mantissa. In this case here, the mantissa, it starts at, po at point 10. So the actual point is actually there, okay, here. So we're going to have, this is 1 upon 2, 1 upon 4, 8, 16, 32, so on and so forth. So it's actually going to be 2 raised to the power of, and this is going to be at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, all the way along till you get to 23. And of course it's minus 23 because it's the fractional part. So we're going to have that, and we're going to have that multiplied by 2 to the power of minus 1, 2, 6. And you can see the power in this now because it means that the smallest number that we can represent is actually smaller than 2 to the minus 1, 2, 6. It's 2 to the minus 1, 2, 6 plus all of the zeros that we have here up to the start of the mantissa, which is 2 to the minus 23. So this number here is going to be minus 1 to the 0, which is a value of 1. And it's going to be 2 to the minus 23 minus 1, 2, 6. So it's going to be minus 23 and it's going to be minus 1, 2, 6. So we just add those two together, which is going to give us 2 to the minus 1, 2, 6. That's 3, 6, 4, 6. That's 1 minus 1, 4, 9. So in decimal, that's going to give us 1.4013 times 10 to the minus 45. Of course, that's approximate. I've just rounded that. So let's have a look at this value in the tool. So if you open up the tool and you go to binary to decimal annotated, then you'll see here that we're going to have the smallest subnormal number of a value of 1 here. So you can see here that we've got the exponents all zeros. So it means that the value for the unbiased exponent is going to be minus 1, 2, 6. So it's fixed when it's a denormal number. And then we can see that the other value here that we're going to have for the mantissa is going to be the smallest value, which is 2 to the minus 23. So that's 2 to the minus 23 here. So we're going to have our 1 for our positive. We're going to have 0 because the leading bit in a subnormal number isn't the 1. It's a 0. Okay, so the hidden bit is a 0. And we've got the smallest part of our subnormal number here as well, which is this value of 1. So in effect, this 1 here is 2 to the minus 23. And we've got our 2 to the minus 126 for our exponent. So if you were to take this value here, we would have 0 plus this, 
times the 1, which in effect would just be 2 to the minus 23 times this part here, which is 2 to the minus 126. So that would give us 2 to the minus 149. And this is the 2 to the minus 149 in our binary. And you can see the, uh, the value, exact value that we have here. So now what we want to do is compare this to the smallest value for a normal number and we can see the difference in range. So the smallest value for a normal number, well the smallest normal number is going to be just a value of 1 here. So you can see here that this here gives us the smallest value for the normal number. So this is going to go down to um, the power e to the minus 38. But we've gone from e to the minus 38 and now we can all go all the way down to e to the minus 45. So you can see the power of adding this extra subnormal range in. So that's us had an introduction to our subnormal numbers. So again, I suggest you open up the tool and have a little play with it and uh, you understand how we can create these subnormal numbers. So that's all there is for this video. I'll get you on the next video. Goodbye.